First, though, uh, before I begin, I want to take us to Romans 5. I want to show us something because when Doyle started dealing with this stuff in the last couple years, he brought out something that, I mean, when he started sharing it, it, it gave me a deeper revelation because I was brought up under the same seducing spirit. I was brought up under where all you had to do was say, forgive me, Jesus, and it's all forgiven. Amen. And that's what they have taught in the church. It's okay, whatever you've done, just say, forgive me, Jesus, it's all forgiven. Well, if you will turn with me to Romans 5, it says different, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith. By faith. Just saying, Jesus, forgive me, you've got to have the faith there. If you don't have the faith there, it says right here, you're justified by faith. Amen. Not by your words, but by your faith. So you have to have faith. You have to have faith to get your sins forgiven. And what I'm going to talk about also is you have to have faith to forgive. Amen. It takes faith to forgive. I want you to go to Matthew 18. I have an interesting testimony today. I'm going to read this quickly, and then I'm going to speak. Uh, Matthew 18, verse 23. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, there was one brought unto him that owed him 10,000 talents. And for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. And the servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, and said, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. Now forgave him, forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, a lot less. And he said, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me what thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant. I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors, delivered him to the tormentors till he had paid all that was due unto him. In verse 35, so likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you, deliver you to the tormentors. If you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Amen. Now you think that's bad? Let's go to a verse that's even worse. I want you to go with me to Mark 11, 25. Amen. Mark 11, 25. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, Neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Do you hear that verse? Do you hear what that verse says? It says, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Do you know what happens when your sins aren't forgiven? If you don't forgive, your sins will not be forgiven. Do you know what happens then? That means your healing can't be healed or your, your sickness can't be healed. Because Jesus paid the price for your healing. And that price was he got your sins forgiven. The reason they got there in the first place. Do you know your prosperity won't work if you don't forgive? Because your sins won't be forgiven. Do you know your eternal life may be in the balance if you don't forgive? If you don't forgive, if you don't forgive, your sins will not be forgiven. Do you realize how horrible that is do you realize how dangerous that is and and it amazes me how far forgiveness goes and like i said it says that you have to have faith to forgive you also have to have faith to forget uh to be forgiven you have to have faith to forgive i shared before a couple years ago about an article of cory ten boom and several weeks ago god had me put that article back up okay. but, he, but but god was after something god was after something in me and the, I couldn't find the original article that I read, so I found another one, and I put that up. And Kathy Courier made a comment on it about the second part of the article. And you know what? The second part I didn't read until she brought that out on Facebook. So I went back and read it. 
Corrie ten Boom in that article, if you had not read it, it's on my Facebook page. Corrie ten Boom had a situation where she, when she was ministering the gospel to the people in Germany after the war, 1947. Corrie ten Boom spent uh, several years in a concentration camp. And when she got out, she ministered to people the gospel, and she, meant, she was ministering about forgiveness. Well, while she was ministering, one of the guards from the concentration camp she was out came to the meeting. And he came up to her afterwards, and he, and he stuck out his hand. He said, uh, he talked to Corey. He said, I was one of the guards at the camp you were at. And Corey Tim Broom realized that he didn't recognize her. Of course he didn't recognize her. She had weight. She was starving then. But she, she, talked to, she talked to him, and she realized at their meeting that she was going to have to forgive this guard at the concentration camp. Her sister died in the concentration camp. Her father died in a concentration camp. She almost died in the concentration camp. And she realized that God had brought this man before her, and she was going to have to forgive him. She did. She asked God. She said she realized. She said that, that forgiveness... Forgiveness is not an emotion. It's an act of the will. It takes faith. It's an act of the will. And she asked the father right there. She said, I can give him my hand, but you're going to have to help me. You're going to have to help me forgive this man. And God did. And she was able to forgive him. She said she stuck out her hand to him, and the Spirit of God hit her. And it went, she said it went down her arm, and it went into his hand. And she said the love of God poured all over her, and she was able to forgive that man from the heart. But then the article went on, and it said you would think that from that day forward, forgiveness would be easy because she could forgive the man that helped to kill her sister. But she said it didn't. She said, about, she said years later, she had some dear Christian friends hurt her, hurt her feelings, hurt her, did something behind her back, and she was hurt. And she said you would think, that after that situation, it would have been easy. But she said for two weeks, she seethed in her heart about what her friends had done to her, how they had, how they had hurt her. And she said she finally had to go to the Father again. And she said, you're going to have to help me again to forgive my friends that had done this to me. And, and she said, you know what? The Father did. He met her there. And she said she had the same feeling. And she could forgive them from the heart. And she said, but it was amazing. The feeling didn't go away right away. She said for weeks she would wake up in the middle of the night and think she had on her heart what these friends had done to her. She said it was worse than what the, what the guard did because they were friends, because they were close. And, and, and they were people that she loved and trusted. And she said she, 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 for a couple of weeks she would wake up in the middle of the night and there would be the sin again. And she said, but Father, I've forgiven them. I know I've forgiven them. Remember, forgiveness is not an emotion. It's not a feeling. It's an act of the will. It takes faith. And she said, I've done this. And, and she finally talked to a Lutheran minister who helped her. And she said it, she, that, that they, she worked it out. She realized she was going to have to just keep putting it off, that, that she was letting God deal with it. And she said it a couple nights. It took a couple nights more. And she said, and then the feelings started going away. And she said she knew the forgiveness was there. And she said a couple times after that it would come up a little bit. But she could again say, I know I've forgiven him and it's gone away. But, but, several years later, she said a friend of hers from America came. And he was visiting her. And when he came to visit her, the friends that had hurt her were there in the room with her. And they were talking. And then the friends left. And, the friend, and her friend from America said, Are the, aren't those the people that hurt you in the past? And she said, yes, they are. And she said, isn't it wonderful? It's all forgiven. She said, it's all forgiven. And he asked her a question. He said, well, have they ever received your forgiveness? And she laughed. She said, you know, they said, well, I've never, not, they, they told her, well, we've never done anything to hurt you. We Amen. never did it. Amen. She said, we, we never hurt you. And she laughed. She said, but you know what? She said, I have proof. She said, I have proof that they hurt me. And she went over to her desk. She goes, I've got the letters right here, how they hurt me. And she went to open the drawer to get the letters out. And her friend walked over to her and grabbed her by the arm. And he said, Corey, Corey. Aren't you the one that preaches that your sins are at the bottom of the ocean? Amen. And you have their sins in a drawer. And Corrie Ten Boom stopped. 
And she said for a couple minutes she couldn't even talk because she realized what was going on. She had kept their sins in a drawer, forgiven them, but she had the evidence. She had the evidence in the drawer. And she said, she stopped right there and she said, Father, grant me the grace. Grant me the grace and the mercy to burn these letters. And she said that night she burned them. She called it a sweet smelling savor under the Father. And I looked at that story and I thought how poignant that was and how, what a blessing that was. And then God spoke to me. He said, you have some email. And I stopped and I went, you're right. I've got some email. I had forgiven, but I had the evidence. And you know what? God doesn't have my evidence of the sins that I've done because I have the faith to be justified. And I was justified by the blood of Jesus by faith, by faith. And yet I had evidence in an in email. And you know what? It took me a couple days because of fear. I had to overcome some fear. But I overcame the fear and I went to my computer and I deleted them all. God had, that's what God was after. He was after something in me. And you know what? God may be after something in you. The evidence, my evidence of all my sins is at the bottom of the ocean, just like Corey Ten Booms. And you know what? The person that had hurt me, no more evidence. In fact, I told the father, you know what, father? Wipe it out from the books. I said, wipe it out from your books. I don't even want evidence in your books that it ever happened. I said, wipe it from the books that it has never happened. And you know when I did that, when it was settled in my heart, and by faith I did that, the faith was there, I've done it. Things changed within a couple days. They changed, and an issue that had been bothering me for years was solved. That's what God was after. He was after my heart, and he may be after yours.